Time now to talk a little men's basketball with JMU men's basketball coach. And that is, of course, uh, Matt Brady as we're here with our weekly fan and press luncheon at O'Neill's Grill on University Boulevard here in Harrisonburg. Well, last week, Coach, uh, we were talking about a couple of losses for the Dukes, the back-to-back -back losses, uh, second time this season. Here this week, back-to-back -back wins, one on the road against the scrappy Drexel team. And then yesterday, what is it between the Dukes and Hofstra? You cannot decide it in regulation. Always takes a few extra minutes to dispose of the pride. Well, whatever it takes, Kurt. We're going to play as long as we have to to try and get a win. Uh, I said to our team after the game yesterday, I was, I was really appreciative of our, of our effort, you know, that we, we got down. And, you know, down 12 at half to a, to a team that I think is the most explosive offensive team in the league. And we didn't really play poorly, really, at either end. They were really that good, and they've done that time and again this season. So it took a great effort, and it took a lot of work. And I think we showed a lot of character in the second half. And that's what we've talked a lot about with our team. Let's show character, toughness, resiliency. And we haven't done it every game, but that's a step in the right direction for our team. Uh, and I think the game at Drexel was really, we just kind of grinded that game into a win. I, I think anytime you play Drexel, you're going to have to play hard. You're going to have to rebound the basketball. Uh, we presented some challenges to them to score in the lane. I thought that was significant. And I think in both of these games, both yesterday and at Drexel, so I think single-digit turnovers and, you know, a reasonably good job yesterday on the defensive glass, which I thought was really particularly important. Uh, yesterday's game, they shot the ball tremendously in the first half in three-point range, and I thought our kids did a really good job of taking away open looks in the second half. Uh, and it looked like when we got into overtime that we had a two-possession lead, but Wanye hit a remarkable three off the dribble going to his left that was deep and contested uh, to made a one possession lead. But we always had, it seemed to me, in, this, in the overtime, the ball with a one possession lead, which was significant for us. In the Drexel game, the Dragons, you made some defensive mistakes that opened up a couple of three-point shots that gave the Dragons the early lead, and then you did overcome them relatively <clears throat> soon after that and, uh, and maintain control of the game. In uh, Sunday's game, how many of those shots that Hofstra made, or you know, not to, not the exact number, but were just unbelievable shots? And how, how many of them were due to defensive mistakes? Yeah, you know, I would say they were nine for 19 in the first half. And uh, there's a couple things you have to do. You have to account for Wanye Green driving and throwing the ball to the right guy. That's a hard thing when you have Gustus rolling to the basket. So Wanye makes great decisions off the ball screen, and he finds any one of four guys if he can't score himself. Uh, I, th I thought the other thing that happened was against our zone, we gave up, we probably made a mistake, you know, where the, where the perimeter pass led to a three. I thought most of the threes they made versus our zone was the ball was inside the lane, and they kicked it back out, which is, you know, which is a hard play to, for us to guard. Uh, certainly in the nine threes, I, th I think it was less mistakes and more really good passing uh, from, their, from their perspective. So, uh, you know, if we're going to play 3-2 against them, we're going to have to be able to guard the three and be able to guard the lane. But I, I don't think it was so much mistakes that we made as really good passing from their, their perspective when the ball got into the lane. It sounds like you might look at that tape and show your team time and time again because that's what you've been stressing and I think we've seen a little bit more of that, where you get the ball in to touch the paint, and once you, once you get it that deep, yeah. you've got many more options. We're seeing a lot of Dukes capitalize on that type of positioning on the floor. Yeah, I think it's two games in a row where we've made threes from the pass off of drill penetration back out. Uh, in fact, a couple of really big plays yesterday. Joey McLean had a kick out for a three. Uh, Devontae Morgan had a kick out for a three. Um, Jackson had a kick out for a three. So really good plays. Obviously the biggest three in, over, in regulation was the offensive rebound by Yohani. Gets the rebound. Ron sprinted to the corner when he recognized that Yohani had the ball. He called his name. Yohani found him. And not an easy shot by any means, but a really good play by Yohani to find Ron, even though Ron did a lot of the work by calling his name and running to an open spot. When you see uh, uh, Rokus Gustis pulled down 18 rebounds against you, he had 20 the first time. Uh, he is a difficult guy to box out because he tracks the basketball so well. 
How was the boxing out yesterday? Yeah, I thought significantly better than the first time. And again, you can't really account for his defensive rebounds. Um, so he gets a pr predominant amount of his rebounds are defensive rebounds. And he's in a zone, and he's near the basket, and he's a big guy, and he's got a great sense for the ball. So you're not going to be able to take away his defensive rebounds. But I thought we did a better job of identifying him when they shot the ball. We did a good job of blocking him out. In fact, I think it was Ron Carey who tried to block him out in the second half, and he just kind of reached over and got the offensive rebound. So good attempt to block him out. Um, we're gonna, if we play him again, we're going to have to do a great job. I mean, you just have to find him and block him out. And yesterday, Denton Kuhn did a great job of running to the glass and getting his hands on some balls. So five offensive rebounds for him. It's a good offensive rebounding team, and there's a reason for it. I mean, having now coached against Joe Mihalik's teams, that's the single biggest thing they, they, they chart and, and uh, coach. They're going to rebound the ball at both ends. They're a particularly good offensive rebounding team, and Joe's teams always are. A couple, of, uh, a couple of other points in the game I want to bring about. Sometimes it's what you don't do can be a big key to a victory. And there was a play yesterday. Um, Alex Vela was working with me on Matazon, and, and he made a good point here. When it was a little bit of a run, a transition for the Dukes, J Jackson Kent was ahead, but not by much of the Hofstra players when Curry was bringing the ball down the floor. It was during a point where JMU was gaining some momentum and Curry elected not to try to go over the top to right. Jackson Kent. Right. It, it needed to be a sure thing, and the senior leadership experience of Curry may have made the difference in a play like that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say the, a sure thing. My staff talks about that uh, often during practice, that, you know, when the game is in the balance, you, 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 know, you, have, to be, you have to be more certain about the decisions you make. So we talk about decision-making a lot. My staff talks about an awful lot about not taking chances uh, in certain situations. And, and you're right, I remember the play. Ron didn't throw the ball over the top, although he could have, and it would have been a 50-50 play. So good decision by Ron. And, and hopefully you know, our players pay attention to that, that you don't have to make a home run play every time. You just have to make sure you get a shot. And again, the fact that our turnovers are not high, we're not a team that turns people over. So we have to make sure we get a good shot. And then, and then you know, it really is a game of possessions. We have to make sure we keep the other team off the glass. And so hopefully we're a team that's getting better in both those areas, keeping our turnovers low and, and not letting the other team get second shots. But I, I think our guys did a good, a good job of knowing when to drive, when to pass, when to shoot. Again, I think our perimeter guys did a tremendous job of feeding the post yesterday and driving the ball and driving when they could score and driving and spinning and, and you know, kind of pivoting in the lane and finding their teammates. Another uh, key point I thought in the game, and this was a turnover created by Devontae Morgan. You bring him in late in the ball game, and um, you and I have talked about this, but for the folks uh, watching and listening today, uh, your use of Devontae Morgan, how are you using him as, as a cog in this? So it was clear that we, we needed another guy to defend, but the opportunity presented itself that we, I had decided that we were going to play four perimeter guys. We were going to play Shakir Brown at four um, because it was obvious that they were scoring at a clip uh, and they were hard to stop. So by virtue of moving uh, Shakir to four and being able to bring Devontae into the game, even though they were playing zone, we put Devontae in the middle on the foul line against their zone. Devontae had a couple of really nice plays where he drove the ball. I think one play he tried to drive and get contact, his shot got blocked. Um, but we also need another guy at the other end to defend. We needed a bigger perimeter guy, and he, I thought he was really good at both ends. In a short amount of time, he made a significant impact in the game, and that, that, that can't be underscored how significant his, his productivity was. Now, you know, we do need him to, to make a couple more free throws there, and I'm sure he'll be back in the gym working on that, but he had a significant impact, and when we go small, it gives me an opportunity to play Devontae with those other guys. So it's really depending on other personnel is how you're going to use him because he, he's had some really very highly productive yeah. minutes, and they've been few minutes, but he's had right. some good productivity. So if the other team is playing man, I feel comfortable that we could put him out there. Drexel's a man-to-man -man team. If they play zone, it's am I going to play Joey McLean against their zone? Because we're going to keep Ron on the court. So it's, if it's Ron and Joey McLean, if it's Devontae, is that enough scoring from one, two, and three? If we're going to play four perimeter guys, I feel like you can do that. You can play three perimeter guys that can shoot. Ron, 
uh, Joey and Shakir, or Ron, Joey, and, and Jackson, and Devontae can now drive the ball. But if it's, if it's again zone and we're playing four perimeter guys, hasn't happened very often, but we haven't seen zone very often, but I think we can do that. So, uh, again, a lot of credit to Devontae for making his presence felt on the court. It's a very difficult position that he's been in this year. He certainly feels like he should be playing more, I'm, I'm certain. Again, Winston didn't play very many minutes yesterday, so it's really by feel, and, and we have a lot of conversation about that by staff. Should we be conventional with two bigs? Should, can we go small? But we won this game twice now by going small, and uh, you know, what, you can always second guess your lineup. I think we do it as a staff after, after every game, win or loss. Uh, I felt go I felt good going in the second half that at some point I was going to have to pull the trigger and go four perimeter guys. All right, let's turn it over to other members of the media here at O'Neill's Grill. Coach, we've talked a lot about atmosphere at the Convo this season. Uh, do you feel like yesterday, with it being the first overtime game this season there, um, that your team was able to feed off of that? And are you getting the feeling that opponents are finding it harder to play at the Convo this season? Well, I do. Uh, again, you know, the first couple games we lost in conference play, not a lot of students, and now we've had the students – we gave them a chance to cheer for us, and that, that's the biggest thing. We, we can create great atmosphere. We have to do our part, and yesterday I thought that we did our part. Certainly the students have been phenomenal when they've been there. Uh, when we have been in session, they've, they've been there. Uh, hopefully that's a game that they enjoyed, uh, recognize the challenging time of the game, a day of the Super Bowl. Uh, but now we have three more home games with students, and I'm really hopeful optimistic and want to encourage them to come out and support us because I think this is a group that's worth cheering for. And I thought that we showed great heart yesterday. And hopefully we can do that now, these next three home games. And, you know, hopefully we can go on the road here and steal a game or two and feel like there's a lot to play for for our team and for JMU. Knowing how the first game went, the fact it went into overtime, Keeping emotions in check, and of course we had the double technical yesterday, which a lot of people still don't really understand. How much, if any, did you spend talking to your time, your team during timeouts about containing their emotions and playing smart and, and playing within themselves? Yeah, well, we, we talk about it all the time that we can't give possessions away and we can't have anybody wandering off and, and being assessed a technical because we know the games are going to be close. Um, and keeping your head and keeping your poise is significant. I've lost my head once or twice this year, and I thought our guys did a really good job of staying composed, yet playing with a lot of fervor. I thought our guys had a lot of fight. Um, and I do think it, the atmosphere provided, you know, the, the environment, you know, so, so I was grateful to see it. I think our guys showed a lot of poise and a lot of fight, and that's something to build on. And, and again, Hofstra, give Hofstra a lot of credit. They played a hell of a game. They were really good yesterday. And they've done that and blown teams out, and they could have done that to us yesterday if, they, if we allowed them to continue to shoot the ball the way they did. But I, I thought our three-point field goal percentage defense was good. Our fight on the glass was good the fact that we kept our turnovers down. And another thing that I thought we did a really good job of in the second half, I thought the ball moved from side to side. It went inside. We drove the ball. So we didn't really give Hofstra a chance to, to put together a lot of runs yesterday. In transition, there were a few times where Gusti was struggling getting up the floor. And there were times where your guys recognized, I know there's one time in particular, Dimitri A looked back, saw him over his shoulder, and was able to get down low. Just talk about them recognizing and able to capitalize. Hey, we've got the numbers here. Well, again, my staff has talked about that more than I have, about we have to make it difficult on them. We've got to post Gooses up every possession we can. We want to run him into the ground. We want to run both ways. We want to see if we can get a pass over the top against him. Uh, and then when we get into half-court sets, let's get into him and post him up. Let's make the game really long for him. Um, and, again, I think up there, I think he fouled out in overtime and, you know, it was a long game. Uh, they have another player that's really athletic in Andre Walker, so the fact that they don't go to him longer, that's up to them. But I, I thought we did what we had to do to get into his legs. And, you know, whether or not it was effective or not, I, I, I don't know exactly. But the game was long, and it was hard. There was a lot of running and, and some fast possessions. But we did what we wanted to do in terms of trying to run, get our forwards to run hard both ways and post. You and I talked in the pregame yesterday about momentum and how to build on that. Coming from behind, forcing overtime, winning, and sweeping Hofstra, how, does, how do you capture that momentum now going on on the road for the next two games? Well, we'll talk about it here with our team in a couple of hours, and, and hopefully we'll, we will have momentum. Um, challenging games coming up. 
You know, there's not a, not, there is not a, a game that's not challenging in front of us. Um, so we're playing a team that leads the league in, in, you know, defense in terms of points given up, and then we play a team that's as difficult to match up for us uh, as there is. And hopefully we've learned our lessons in our building against these two teams. Uh, but, you know, if we're going to pursue a championship, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you know, figure out a way to get a win or two here coming up. And our guys are ready to play, I think. We're, we're going to not get into our legs at all today. We'll have a recovery day. We'll watch some tape. Uh, our guys will be ready, and hopefully we'll play well enough. Ron had 31 yesterday, and, uh, you know, he just keeps moving up the all-time scoring list here at JMU. Would you say he's the best player you've ever coached at this school? Yeah, I don't know, but he's becoming the most indispensable player I've ever coached. The fact that he's doing it as, as the lone senior starter is significant because, you know, typically when you have great seasons, you have multiple senior starters, and we have one senior starter. Winston's the other senior, so he's taken on the responsibility of leading this group, and I think he's done a remarkable job. He's had a great senior season. Uh, we want him to continue to have a great senior season. I think last couple games he's gotten some contributions from his junior counterparts and from other guys like Joey McLean that have played well. So as long as he gets some help and we get a second, third, and fourth scorer, I think Ron can lead us, hopefully, to a lot more wins. You've said in the past that his recruitment was kind of a throwback. You know, you did most of it yourself. Has, has it been more special seeing him develop, just knowing uh, you guys kind of come from the same place? Well, it is because, you know, he, he, plays, he played for a, a high school coach that's a friend of mine. I've known him for 30 years. So to get a young guy out of my high school uh, and to see him develop, not just as a player, I've said this many times, but his development as a person – as a mature young guy, has been really fun to watch. I mean, he really has taken over the, the ownership of this program and this team, and, and, and his teammates really respect him. So he was a very quiet freshman. In a lot of ways, he's still very quiet. Uh, he speaks softly, but his, his words really rever reverberate in our locker room. So it's been neat to watch him grow up. And, and he, that's really what you hope for every player. And not every player has the same timeline. And some. Sometimes you get a guy that's mature as a freshman. We have a few of those in our program. But, you know, generally it's the evolution of these young guys, and you watch them grow up from freshman to their senior years, and they have an impact in a lot of different ways. Ron's had a, an impact in our program in a lot of different ways. So was he on your recruiting radar first, or did somebody from Paul the Six reach out to you? Yeah, no, we were aware of him. And obviously being in my high school, I was aware of him as a freshman. And then as a sophomore, I went and watched him and as a junior. Um, you know, going into his junior year, I watched him a lot and recognized that he could be a great college player. And, uh, you know, I think there was a connection there with all the, the, you know, with all the degrees of separation with me going to school there and knowing the high school coach and his family knowing some of the same people I knew. So it, it, it's been fun to watch him develop and, and grow as a player. And certainly, you know, hopefully if there's another player in his high school like that, we can go back and get another one. Yeah, I mean, how much of a different point guard was he there compared to when you played? No, I, I think I think what you're seeing from Ron is the, kind of the same career he had. You know, he was he was a significant player as a young player, uh, but he took ownership of, of his high school team as a junior and senior. As a senior, he's one. He was a South Jersey Player of the Year, had a chance to win a state championship, but had to go Carl go through Carl Anthony Towns and didn't win. Lost in the state semifinals. Uh, and hopefully, you know, he can take us all the way. You know, I think he's got the chance and he's got the ability. And hopefully his teammates will do their part. But I, I certainly feel like Ron's going to do everything he can to lead us as far as he can. And last one for you here. I mean, what do these next two games mean for your guys' title hopes? Nick, every Monday we talk about this. These, we're going to take it one game at a time, Nick. We're, we're going to talk about Charleston. And we're going to have a game plan and we're going to try and play our best game. Um... We're playing a really good defensive team that scores timely baskets. Uh, I, I think going on the road, it's going to be a great game. And then win or lose, we're going to flip the page and hopefully be in a great game on Saturday afternoon at Wilmington. Uh, again, I'm not putting stock in any, any one game more than any others. If we win two, we're going to come back and have to win a game on Thursday. So if we lose two, then we lose two. We're going to have to do a great job and win every game we can. So... We're in a really good conference. Not a lot of separation 
and uh, we have to make we have to make some make our own plays here and make put ourselves in position to have a chance to do in with high seed, no matter what that seed is. Charleston lost Canyon Berry for the season. How has that changed their team dynamic? Have you been able to watch much of them, and have they changed what they did when they yeah, were here at the convo? You know, I don't think it's changed Charleston all that much. They hung their hat on defense when they came in here, and they defended us at a very high level. Uh, they had some opportunistic second-shot baskets against us, and we didn't play well offensively Excuse me. in that game. We were in a one-possession game late in that game, and, and they played better down the stretch. Um, so we're going to have to play better. One of the things we've stressed to our team is starting games better, start, starting games and halves better, and ending games and halves better. I think we did that against, against Hofstra both times. Now we're going to have to turn the tables and do that against a, a really good Charleston team. Coach, I want to go back to uh, Ron Curry just a moment here. Um, some of the shots that he makes, it, it, they are just – Point on. I mean, they are they are just bulleted right through. And um, how much has his work elevated his possibility of playing beyond his career here at James Madison? Well, again, a lot of credit to my staff for getting in the to gym with Ron. They, my assistants do a tremendous job. They were working out already with guys this morning. Guys that started yesterday were in the gym already this morning. So my staff does a terrific job of getting in the gym and, and working out with guys and. Um, Ron has put in a lot of work in the last couple of years on his own game. You know, and, it, 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 and I think Ron will be the first one to tell you, he probably didn't do enough of that early in his career. When you're a freshman, it doesn't always go your way. Um, sometimes it's, ho it's easy to hide and not work on your game. Last two years, Ron has been terrific at getting in the gym and working on his game, and you see the results kind of speak for themselves. Uh, he's become a tremendous shooter, and obviously we all know he wasn't a great shooter his first two years. So... A lot of credit for, to Ron and my assistants for getting in the gym and working with them. Um, but it really is, t is a testament to getting in the gym and working on, on your game. And I, we tell guys, our players all the time, if you see the big picture, you see this as four years that go rapidly. And if you just kind of punch the bag every day for four years, you're going to be a much better player as a junior than you were as a freshman. I, in fact, Kevin Cagney was in the gym this morning working out. So it's the same message we deliver every day. It's great to see a guy have uh, the results that he's having. Ron is a great shot maker. In fact, I think he's a better shot maker than shooter. He, he's got this presence of mind to make shots in difficult spots, uh, but he's become a really good shooter too. All right, that's head coach uh, Matt Bray. The Dukes on the road this week. They will face the College of Charleston Cougars on Thursday night in Charleston, South Carolina. And then we'll head up the coast a little bit to Wilmington, North Carolina, to face the first place Seahawks. And that game is Saturday afternoon. Thank you for joining us here at O'Neill's Grill with our weekly fan and press luncheon with JMU basketball coaches. We'll be, we will be back again next Monday here at O'Neill's Grill.